it's a study of diseases of the jaws and of the maxillofacial complex. Okay, so lower jaw, upper jaw, maxillofacial complex, uh, and um, and it's a, it's it's the application of, uh, of of imaging of various sorts, uh, not just X-rays, but it can be MRI uh, and various forms of X-rays. It can be uh, you know the standard intraoral radiographs. Uh, it can be um, it could be extraoral panoramic. Uh, it could also be CT, computed tomography, uh, which is a form of digital imaging. But it's a study of diseases of the jaws, and the jaws are unique in that uh, a lot of the diseases are of odontogenic origin. That is, they, they originate because of tooth problems or because of tissues that form tooth problems. So in the jaws, uh, for instance, tumors are quite unique. And, um, and because of that, uh, there is really a need for a specialist to recognize those very, uh, those very special diseases that occur in the jaws that may not occur in the rest of the body. For general dentistry and for most of dentistry, uh, the most common type of imaging is film-based and the, and the uh, films are used intraorally, that is placed inside the, the mouth. Uh, and you may know this from your regular dental experience. Uh, the x-ray beam is outside, the x-ray head, and the film is inside, uh, and you get pictures of the, of the uh, or images of the teeth that way. That would be the most, most common. It's film-based intraoral. Second to that is probably uh, intraoral but digital based, that is digital imaging where no film is used but rather uh, solid state sensors, CCDs, the same sort of thing you have in your digital camera or your cell phone, uh, are used to capture the image and then it's all computerized and you don't have film and you don't have processing. But intraoral radiography would be definitely uh, the, the most common. And then um, uh, that would be followed probably by um, uh, a type of extra radiograph called panoramic, where you get a picture of the entire jaw on one film, a flat film. Uh, and, uh, and what's become more common recently, and we'll talk about maybe later in the interview, is a type of 3D imaging, uh, a dental 3D imaging called cone beam CT. Well, first of all, whether you t uh, most imaging in, in dentistry is use, uses X-rays, which is a type of ionizing radiation, uh, and uh, ionizing radiation has risk associated with it. And the risk we're talking about is uh, perhaps one one in a million, two in a million chance of uh, a chance of inducing 10, 20 years down the line a malignancy, perhaps an inheritable, an inheritable mutation. So the first thing is you have to before you decide what kind of radiograph, you make the decision whether or not to take a radiograph. And that's based on clinical need. If after you've done your examination and you feel you have all the information you can get visually and by questioning the patient, then you make a decision as to whether or not you think there's any hidden disease that is occult or hidden disease. And for that, you feel that you have to take a radiograph before you can do a complete the exam properly and do a proper diagnosis. And then when you decide that you need a radiograph, then you have to decide what type. And that really, that's a very broad question. It just depends on, on the area and the type of information. If you're looking for interpossible decay, or you're looking to, for periodontal disease, or you're looking for, uh, to uh, examine third molars, uh, there's a, there's a host of different kinds of radiographs, all depend on the specific clinical problem. But again, first you make the decision that you're going to take a radiograph, and then you have to decide. So there isn't a specific answer. Uh, uh, just typically, if you, if you want to get a good view of your third molars that are impacted, say in, in someone your age, 25 year old, say, uh, you might take a panoramic radiograph. Uh, but if that 
if one of the third molars appears to be wrapped around the inferior alveolar nerve, the major ner sen nervous sensation in the jaws, then you may want 3D imaging like cone beam CT to see how the roots are related to the inferior alveolar nerve so when you extract the third molar you don't uh, damage the nerve. So that's just one example how the specific problem dictates what type of, of radiograph. For interproximal decay, that is decay where the teeth contact you, a type of intraoral radiograph called a bite wound. So again, that's just that's just two types. But again, it all depends on on what your specific uh, what information you're looking for. I would say in the last, uh, starting maybe 15, 20 years ago. Um, big advancement was digital imaging, that is the replacement of film, which requires processing with developer and, and fixer, replacing that with, uh, with digital imaging, which is the images captured on a solid state device, like a, a transistor based device, like your cell phone takes pictures with. That's at least 20 years ago, okay, and that's, uh, I, I, would, I would guess, uh, maybe 30, 40 percent of the practice, 30 percent of practice in the United States use digital imaging. So it's still a, it's still a, it's, it's, it's around for 20 years, but it's been a while. Whereas in medicine, it's almost completely imaging, it's com almost completely digital. In the last 10 years, the big advancement, and especially in the last six or seven, is a type of uh, digital imaging called, uh, type of, and a type of computer tomography, or CT, called cone beam CT. And this is um, a three-dimensional uh, type of digital imaging that gives you information in three dimensions. Uh, and the reason why it's become so uh, widely used now in dentistry is that the radiation doses have been reduced, the size and cost of the machine has been reduced, so you can get it into a dental office. So now almost every specialty, even general dentistry, is using cone beam CT, but um, but still, uh, most practices are using film. Far and away, most practices are still using film. Cone beam CT, I'm not sure what percentage of practices in the United States, maybe 15, 20 percent, I'm guessing. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, cone beam CT would be the latest uh, advancement. It's not the patient that seeks out the radiologist. It's the dentist that refers a patient to get imaging from the radiologist. But most basic imaging, maybe 90%, is done by the general dentist. So dentistry, uh, unlike medicine, in dentistry, the x-ray unit has always been a part of the practice. But medicine, it was like that maybe 40, 50 years ago, where a, where a general physician would have an x-ray machine in his office. But now all imaging is done by radio medical radiologists in big centers. But dentists still t have their own x-ray machines and 90% or more of the x-rays they take, the radiographs they take, are, are, are standard intra-all radiographs, just looking for decay and periodontal disease and so on. Um, uh, most of the imaging, most what I'm asked to do specific imaging, using special uh, imaging technique like cone beam CT, it's usually from a specialist, like an orthodontist or an oral surgeon, or an endodontist or a periodontist placing an implant, then they don't have the cone beam CT themselves, although a lot of them are starting to buy it. But they'll, they'll send them to me to do, to do the imaging. Okay? And then I send the images to them, and they, using software, take the measurements, get the information they want. And what I do as radiologists is write a report to, uh, to make sure that there's no disease present. So the dentist or the specialist is just interested in getting the information they want, but, but ethically um, and, uh, and, and legally they're required to read the entire radiograph. So for instance, if you take uh, a panoramic radiograph to extract wisdom teeth, you still have to look at the rest of the radiograph. And if you're not familiar with the anatomy, you would send the radiograph to me to be, to be read. Okay? Well, that's if you have the machine to take it. If you don't have the machine to take a cone beam CT, you send it to me to take it, and I would do the reading, write a report, and then explain to you how to do the measurements. For instance, if you're placing implants and you want to know how much room you have. Okay, so it's not the 
patient who seeks me out. It's the dentist and usually it's a specialist. Okay, the most common uh, disease found in the oral cavity or abnormality is decay and you would use intraoral radiographs like bite wing radiographs to study that. Probably the second most common abnormality is periodontal disease, that is loss of the support of the teeth and intraoral radiographs like um, uh, periapical radiographs are used and maybe third would be uh, diseases that result from uh, infection of the pulp of the teeth, uh, endodontic lesions and periapical radiographs would be used for that.